three, two, one, Leo. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Ryan Smith, and welcome to the Ryan Smith Podcast. Get your umbrellas out. I'm about to brainstorm. Let's go. Somebody's got to do it. And notice this deafening silence on the Supreme Court overturning Roe v. Wade. Uh, I have a couple things to say. Number one, I'm going to continue to preach that this left, left side and right side is just a collection of people that refuse to make decisions for themselves and neglect the God-given ability to choose and have choice and have an opinion. And it's more like they follow politics as they follow sports. They root for who they're told and they root for their team. And their opinions are who the coach of their team tells them Uh, what the coach of their team tells them their opinions are. And 90% of you fall into that category. You don't like it? Fucking change it. Until I'm going to continue to remind you, sheep, that that's all you are. You want to be intellectual? Earn it. Thing with abortion, right? Woman's body, woman's choice. I, uh... If I had to pick, keeping in mind this was something that the United States citizens never voted on, I would uh, have to vote to make it legal, Um, simply because the prohibition of most things, and this is one of the reasons abortion became legalized, uh, results in nothing. People do it anyway. They find ways around it. So uh, whatever we do to alter the laws to make it harder, people are going to find ways. And, you know, whether the country thinks it's right, wrong, moral, immoral, it doesn't really matter. Really, this law just affects poor people the most. But here's the thing, left-wing and right wing. I have watched so many right wing uh, pro-life advocates when it happens to their family and their daughter gets knocked up and is in a spot where she is not financially or emotionally or physically ready to raise a child. All of a sudden they're in favor of abortion and on the left I have seen so many people bash a man for having an opinion that the baby should be aborted because the woman wants to uh, have a kid to have cute pictures on Facebook. Here's the thing with this issue. No one on the left is really okay with it. It reminds me of a judge that has to sentence someone to death. You know, that's their duty, and they should be loath to do so. But they have to, sometimes. So people on the left, reframe your issue. Get real. Don't act like you are completely, completely okay with the thought of uh, aborting a fetus because it's not a real person and life doesn't start until a certain point. You're not okay with that. You struggle with it. You might bury it deep down, but you struggle. And on the right, guess what? You are more vocal and uh, put it out there like you're champions of the cause, but you're full of shit too. Because, like I said, when it suits you 
and you know under the right circumstances because don't forget we always put it out there cloak ourselves in religion on the right right that's what everyone on the right does yet you know someone's raped the baby's going to be born with a mental disability you know now the rules change what 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 happened what happened to god now what happened to your excuse when you uh, have no explanation for anything else in life god did it god it's god's will the excuse you know that you guys use when you uh, can't use critical thinking god did it what happened it's okay then god doesn't count for those uh, occasions no one's okay with it and it should be something we could come together on but you know i'm not going to hold my breath there i'm going to talk about the supreme court because for my entire life supreme court has been the soul of this nation you know it has been the voice of the people they uh make rulings if you read them they say that it's a national consensus against the national consensus for certain issues and as time changes they tweak and amend laws to evolve with that national consensus but i'm here to say those motherfuckers all of you you're not all get out every one of you gets up there when you're confirmed and swears that you've never even thought about how you would rule in an abortion case if you know because let's not forget until recently every single one of them was asked that question because well basically would have you ever thought about what you would do if uh we would overturn Roe v Wade and not one justice ever claimed they had ever thought about it no perjury there no uh justice scalia um infinitely um tried to rule out that Exxon Valdez uh, oil spill after you know 30 years of not paying out the uh p- the uh, people affected by it with their drunk ship captain um he decided that i remember he was stomping for you know the idea back in the day when he was still alive and i guess it's not fair to attack the dead but what do i care about fair uh you know that they shouldn't be held liable even though they knew he was a drunk who better to uh, captain a ship with 530 million gallons of crude oil across the ocean you know the supreme court should be made of stronger stuff that's what i think so let's start there All right guys anchor.fm my home podcast platform my favorite of all of them by far if you haven't heard about anchor it's by spotify it's their podcast wing it has everything you need in one place let me explain it has all the tools you need to record and edit the podcast right from your phone or your computer uh there's so much you'll see on youtube about needing this microphone that microphone no anchor has it all right in the app i'm telling you the quality that it can pick up in your voice right from a normal phone it's unmatched no app i can download can record with the uh precision of anchor and when you're hosting on anchor you can describe your podcast on uh listening pop- platforms like spotify apple google um radio host even more uh it's it's just everything you need to make a podcast guys it's all in one place it's the best and guess what it's completely free download the anchor app today go to anchor.fm to get started. Once again, anchor.fm that's a n c h o r.fm to get started. My point, the Supreme Court hasn't for a long time represented the will of the people. Like you know, and, and I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back. Let's say you know, the right to bear arms. uh the regulations on guns whether for or against uh the second amendment everybody is for waiting periods and a little more restriction when obtaining a license for an assault rifle uh they refuse to touch it because the NRA is so powerful uh death penalty what do we have 
five states that have authorized the death penalty in non-homicide cases. But, you know, there's no national consensus there. Forty-five states wouldn't even dream of uh, killing somebody that hasn't murdered someone, and uh, we're not going to put it into federal law. Not to mention there has been a moratorium on states that it is legal, such as my home state, New Jersey. You know, it's legal there. I think in the 70s was the last time they actually um, executed somebody, and there's a lot more states like that. You know, technically it's legal. They're not going to go and change the law, but they're also not going to sentence anyone to death. It's like, uh, you know, like I said, they declared a moratorium. And uh, the Supreme Court's not going to recognize that. We're going to join the ranks of China, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Iraq, Uganda. You know, that, that's the company we belong in. That, that's, that's the will of our people. Are you kidding me? What about the simple fact that I have always loved that when the case uh, is appealed all the way up to the United States Supreme Court and it makes it to that high level that the attorneys arguing the case are not free to amend the record that the Supreme Court works off of. And just for those of you that are familiar with the process, the record is the verdict. So if, uh, you know, there's a coked up lawyer in Texas that's sleeping through half of the trial and his uh, client who was, you know, no proof to have even been at the murder scene is found guilty and is sentenced to the, te to the uh, death penalty, which Texas proudly leads the country in every year by 50% or more as far as executions. Um, they are not free to even raise innocence as a part of the argument if that uh, unconstitutionality is brought before in that particular case. And, you know, I, I, I can see the wisdom in that because otherwise you would, I guess, just be using the Supreme Court to try a case. But, you know, really you're going to actually ignore innocence when you're deciding on a capital case? That's something that people in that uh, courtroom with the red drapes, that beautiful Hall of Justice that's supposed to represent the soul of America, that's, that's what those people are uh, made out of? That's what they're bringing to the table? You kidding me? I mean, am I supposed to be fucking impressed? Oh, oh, and it's not political either. Of course, the Supreme Court, they are not, it's, it's not political at all, even though it's uh, never, to my recollection, happened that a Democrat has nominated a conservative justice or a, a Republican has nominated a liberal justice. There's no politics involved there. Uh, Donald Trump nominated three conservatives, and that, to the Republicans, is regardless of how they actually feel about Trump, makes him a uh, hero. It's funny because <laughs> it's just dumb luck who gets to nominate justices, who retires, who dies, you know? Um, every president should strive to get somebody uh, that's a moderate. That would be the best way to do it. It's the one thing that's still not broken in our system. The fact that Donald Trump can get elected after Obama when it seems like Hillary is a lock and they're going to have a 16-year liberal renaissance. You know what? I am not a fan of Trump. Not a huge fan of Hillary, but, you know, I uh, am a fan of experience in any job. And whatever experience Hillary had, whatever experience anyone running against Trump had, trumped Mr. President Trump's experience. And uh, you know what, they would have made a better president because they would have actually known what they were doing. But um, you know, it's good because it swings back and forth, left and right, it keeps the country balanced. You don't necessarily want 16 years of a Democrat in office or a Republican in office. You don't know what can happen. And the Supreme Court justice nominations are one of the very reasons. So as much as you want to do away at the Electoral College, all the things that people want to tweak, Here's the thing, you only hear the left stomping about that and the right trying to uh, prevent it because, yeah, that's uh, been well known for a while. If we did away with the Electoral College and just went on a popular vote, you would never see a uh, re 
conservative president again. You know, most of this country is so, is socially liberal and social issues because uh, this country especially has become too stupid to understand fiscal issues, um, <laughs> especially the government <laughs> and the Fed. Um, <laughs> they just keep putting everything on the fucking credit card and let the next generation worry about it, <laughs> even though it's, uh, you know, fucking just... Uh, just heaping down on top of us, chasing us down as we speak. Let the next generation worry about it. Hey, it's here, idiots. So <laughs> the, the whole country, the electorate and the elected officials uh, are all too stupid to uh, care about the fiscal part. So, you know, social politics is what we elect presidents on. And uh, like I said... This country would never elect a socially conservative president if we went by the popular vote. That's not good for a democracy. It's the one thing I'll give Mitch McConnell credit for saying, not in the context what he said it, but he says that this separation, the divide, is good for government. I know what he means. He means when there is, you know, two sides that almost hate each other, that's good because that's how a democracy works. It keeps a balance. You know, God forbid he can articulate that. It's probably gets stuck in his fucking turkey neck. But anyway, back to the Supreme Court. And like I said, I'm going to even go back in history because, uh, you know, the newer justices haven't had time, but give them time. They'll fuck up. Um, you know, Justice Scalia, he was on that duck hunting trip, the infamous duck hunting trip when Cheney gets shot in the face. He was on that duck hunting trip with Cheney while Cheney was involved in a Supreme Court case being heard <laughs> while Scalia was on the bench. Didn't really uh, avoid the appearance of impropriety there, did he? And he didn't seem too concerned with it either. At the same time, Judge Alito, um, he never would recru recuse himself in uh, terrorism cases that were brought before the court, even though his best friend was uh, Michael Chernoff, I believe his name was, and at the time he was he was uh, the head of Homeland Security. So Alito and Chernoff, best friends, he doesn't recuse himself in uh, terrorism cases when his best friend's the, the head of Homeland Security. He was uh, caught at that same time that Cheney shot himself in the face, I remember, here in a case involving like a half a million dollars of a company that he was invested in. I mean, the Supreme Court. This is the Supreme Court of the United States. Clarence Thomas once went 143 cases in a row without saying a single word. Without saying a single word. Are you kidding me? Is that, is that, is that, uh, is that something that we need up there? Is that a brilliant mind that uh, he reads magazines during some of the cases. He claims that he has already done his research before. So if, uh, you know, that's possible, why even have lawyers uh, stand there in front of the panel and argue? But let's keep going. The uh, Democrats, the near, um, you know, nomination pattern that they have uh, gone down. Um, Obama did a really good job and was it uh was it neil gorsuch no no it was merrick garland merrick garland his last nominee um was a uh you know a great great pick and uh man i hope i have that name right gorsuch garland merrick garland i'm pretty sure merrick garland and he's the one that, you know, was nominated but never sworn in because the Republicans pulled some bullshit that the Democrats never would because it's inappropriate, you know. And when they go low, we go high, which means we lose, they win. <laughs> Great strategy. <laughs> At least you have your fucking dignity. <laughs> Not like uh, any of your woke fucking supporters uh, are going to notice or can even spell dignity, but... <laughs> Their spell check will take care of it. Anyway, Merrick Garland was a great pick, and uh, before that, he did a great job because he started the trend breaking lines of uh, 
women of color, um, was Sonia was Sotomayor, I believe, was the uh, you know one from I think she was a Latina from the Bronx, first uh, you know woman of color to be in the Supreme Court, and that was uh, necessary. It was time, you know, and especially considering he had beaten Hillary, who you know people forget at the time was the heir apparent. <laughs> the first time she was the heir apparent and fucking lost to Obama, uh, you know, when she couldn't even get past the primaries. But um, anyway, but you know, then, then it, it kept up. And you know, now it's like uh, that's all Democrats will nominate are women. And I'm not saying that's bad. I'm just saying, you know, sometimes you have to have the best, the best qualified uh, person, you know, is, is that, uh, you know, is that so outrageous? Man, I still hope I, Merrick Garland is not Neil Gorsuch and vice versa. <laughs> anyway, man, I hope I don't get that name wrong. I hope that's not one of the actual justices that I'm mixing up, but uh, I, I think that's right. Um, and you know, now he is uh, obviously the attorney general. And if uh, I get that wrong, sorry again concussion the memory gotta forgive me but uh you know look uh, look who we've nominated recently you know just women of uh, color and i'm not saying that's a bad thing but um democrats you, you have such a habit of doing this you know uh, i'm all for affirmative action but do you have to only only go as extreme you know as you can you know, you have a, a president that's dying in office and the person that's backstopping him thinks she's qualified to be president. She's no more qualified than Trump. Sorry, I know that's not a popular opinion and I have nothing against her. And I think she has all the potential in the world. But, you know, the president of the United States right now, Joe Biden, is getting things done because of his experience. His vice president is there for looks. And that's often been how the vice president uh, position has been, uh, you know, constructed. They don't really have much duty and responsibility, but when there's a real chance that the president can die in office, you need to be cognizant of that shit. And, you know, the way politics works, what do you think is going to happen if he decides to step down and not run for a second term? Do you really think there is going to uh, be a candidate that can run besides our current vice president without, uh, you know, the, the left uh, raising fucking hell? No, of course not. They're going to fucking make it like uh, it's her turn, like it's a goddamn monarchy, the thing that the Republicans used to think we needed. <laughs> you know, it's, it's worse than the fucking liberals abandoning free speech for political correctness. You know, everything's fucking backwards. And, you know, the Supreme Court is where it's all starting. Let's keep going. It should be made of sterner stuff, the Supreme Court. There are a number of remedies that we could seek that we do not. There's nothing that says there has to be nine justices. Right now, if uh, we really wanted to, if uh, the Democrats take the midterms and um, Biden you know, wants to be ballsy enough, which he won't because he's a Democrat. But, you know, you better bet your ass if the Republicans were in a six to three minority where Roe v. Wade was getting overturned, uh, you know, or let's, let's put it in something they can understand, where the Second Amendment was getting overturned because there were six liberals bleeding hearts on the. You think, you really think that they wouldn't sign a new executive order if they had the House, the Senate, and the, uh, and the presidency? to put uh, 11 justices, 13 justices, 15 justices, however many it need, they need to stack the deck so they can vote in whatever they want as law? Are you kidding me? That's how they play it. It's how they've always played it. It's the only way they can because they're always outnumbered. But you got to give it to them. They play politics better than the Democrats. They're, Democrats are just a bunch of pussies. And left, stop trying to uh, encourage the civil war with the South. You know, your anti-Second uh, Amendment beliefs are going to put you in a position of extreme disadvantage there. The Supreme Court should be made of certain stuff. Back to the point. 
in Kennedy's uh, short uh, time as the Chief Justice, he has turned back the clock on civil rights, school segregation, equal protection, free speech, abortion, campaign finance, uh, gun control. What else do we have? Uh, they've all been overtly and shamelessly pro-business to the point where uh, the little guy and most plaintiffs can't even, uh, it's not even possible for them to sue corporations. They can't afford to get them in court. They get tied up in pre-trial litigation for so long that they go bankrupt trying to sue for something that they would n in undoubtedly fucking win in a slam dunk. There's no anti-monopoly laws. There's a... Uh, Far fewer countries and uh, companies than anyone is aware that run and own everything in this country, not to mention the government. Corporations have run the government and owned the government for a very long time. Big oil, big tobacco, big pharma. Is somebody going to check these people? The NRA? What are, what are these lobbies? You know? What, do, do you. It, it, they literally have uh, been. There's been reports that they have their own. Uh, you know, CIA type uh, organizations working for the lobbies when anyone even threatens to, uh, you know, get on the internet and make a loud announcement against their interests. They will finance anybody running for an office. They'll finance their opponent heavily to make sure that they lose. This is not democracy and it's not a republic either. I know that is a very popular refrain. I would love for the people that say it to explain what they mean so you can see them stumble over their fucking stupid, knuckle-dragging, mouth-breathing, tongue-tied words. Who are these fucking people? They have transformed that court in f from being a governmental branch devoted to civil rights and liberties, protectors of discrimination, uh, a guardian of government, and a slave to money, the interest, and big business. That's what they've transformed this uh, judicial branch into. That's a fact. Do you, does anyone out there care to spin it a different way, interpret it a different way? I would love to listen. And I, I mean that. Listen. Not argue. Listen. Because I'd love you to explain it to me a different way. The Supreme Court was designed to be free and unadulterated by politics. It's now dominated by it. They're handpicked by presidents with ideological agendas. And of their last 50 decisions that had a 5-4 ruling, 43 broke straight across ideological lines. That's politics. And when they claim to be against judicial activism, they rewrote, uh, check that, they invented a law to decide a presidential election when I was in college, for God's sake. Who are these fucking people? You know what? If that's the way it's going to be, fine. But at least have the decency to put your fucking names on ballots and let us vote. Not like anyone's going to fucking do that in this country, but that is political. And that is how that should be run. If they are not going to live up to the very intention of their existence. At least that way, we the people get a voice. In closing, on the front of the, uh, since I'm in D.C. now, I uh, walked past the Supreme Court building. On the front of it, it says, Equal Justice Under Law. And despite my tone in this whole recording, I, I want to say that I truly, truly always have been, and still am, in enormous awe of that institution. It gives me chills to to see it up close. Like I said, elected officials represent the will of the American people, but the Supreme Court has always represented our soul and our conscience. My conscience 
and I hope it bears since there are so many new members. I simply can't reconcile things continuing the way they are if this country is to ever have any hope of seeing its tricentennial. What are you gonna do about it? All right, I'm done. This has been an R. Smith production. Good night.